Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. So today I'm going to go through some IGCSE differentiation exam tips and strategies so you can really focus your revision on this quite difficult topic on the IGCSE course. Now, the key thing when you're revising this topic is identifying different types of question and knowing how to answer those questions. I loosely break this down into three types here. So type one is the so-called just get on and differentiate the function. So let's do an example of this. We have a quadratic, y equals 3x squared minus 5x plus 4, and we want to find the value of dy by dx at a specific value, in this case, minus one. So the first thing we do in this kind of type one example is we take dy by dx and we differentiate the function. So we take the two, we bring it to the front, three times two is equal to six, and we reduce the index by one. So we get six x to the power of one, or just six x. When we differentiate a linear part here, so minus five x, we just take the coefficient in front of the x, so minus five, and wherever we're differentiating the constant term, the number here, that always goes to zero. So we have our dy by dx, that's equal to six x minus five. Now we need to find the value at x equals minus one. So we want to find dy by dx at the value of x equals minus one. So wherever we see an x, we're gonna pop in a minus one. So we get six lots of minus one, minus five. Now a little bit of calculation here. Minus one times six is minus six, minus six, minus five. That's equal to minus 11. Don't forget those basic negative number skills are important all across the IGCSE course. Um, the way I teach this, by the way, is if I have six ice cubes and I add an extra five ice cubes, does my hand get warmer or colder? It gets colder. So we're going to have negative 11 here. Now, type two is finding turning points. Sometimes this is also known as stationary points. Again, these trigger words are always very important. If you want a video based on trigger words in general at IGCSE, then check out the video above. Now here we're given a cubic x cubed minus three x squared. We want to find the turning points and then whether they're a maximum or a minimum. So the way we do this, like any differentiation question, we're always finding the derivative. So we take the three, bring it to the back, we get three x, reduce the index by one, that gives us squared. Now this one, we do exactly the same way as before. We take the two, we bring it to the back, minus three times two is minus six, and reduce the index by one, that gives us then just six x. Now because of this trigger word, turning point, we want to make dy by dx equal to zero. That means we need to solve this quadratic, 3x squared minus 6x is equal to zero. Now this is a special kind of quadratic where we can factorize into a single bracket. So what do they have in common? Well, they have 3x in common, and then we work backwards. What do you multiply 3x by to get 3x squared? Just x. What do you multiply 3x by to get minus 6x? Minus two. And therefore then, if these two things multiply to give me zero, either x is zero or x is two. So we just solve our quadratic and very important skill that we need to do. Now we need to find if there are a maximum or a minimum. So the way we do this is a double derivative. So we differentiate again. So we take what we have for here. So again, we take the two, bring it to the back, we get six x, and then with any linear term, we just read off the coefficients, so that's just minus six. So we've got a double derivative. Now we're gonna use these points, so these coordinates, x coordinates, x is zero and x is two. So when x is zero, then our d2y over dx squared is equal to uh, six, lots of zero, minus six, that's equal to negative six. If we do this with two, let's just do both at the same time here. We get d2y over dx squared is six lots of two minus six. That gives us positive six. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Again, if you think about a general cubic, 
Generally, it has this kind of shape. So we have our minimum, maximum first, and then our minimum. This is no different here. Because we get a negative number here, this is going to be our max. Because we get a positive number here, that's going to be our minimum. Now, generally speaking, we haven't found the actual points themselves. We could actually work out the x co uh, the y coordinates by substituting in x is 0 back in our original equation. If I do that quickly, so we get 0, 0 as the first coordinate. If we substitute 2 in, we get 2 cubed is 8 minus 3 times 2 squared. That's 12. So our other coordinate will be 2 minus 4. So strictly speaking, with a type 2 question here, they will usually ask you to work out the y coordinate as well. And on to type 3 here. So we want to find the tangent here, not the normal. Generally, that's not done on this IGCSE course. So we have a function and we want to find the equation of the tangent at this particular point. So the way that we do this, we differentiate again. <laughs> Get certain words I'm looking for. Yeah, If I see the word tangent, I'm going to differentiate. If I see the word turning point, I'm going to differentiate. If we differentiate this, we take the 2, bring it to the back, we get 2x. Any linear term, we just read off the minus 5. Any number, so plus 5 here, this will differentiate to 0. Now, we know the x-coordinate of where we want the tangent. So when x is equal to 1, we take the x-coordinate here. Then we work out dy by dx at that particular coordinate. That gives us 2 lots of 1 minus 5, 2 minus 5. And that gives us minus 3. Now we know the gradient of the tangent. We can then say that the tangent will have the equation. Because remember, this represents the m, the gradient of our straight line here. So we then get y equals minus 3x plus c. Now to work out our y-intercept here, we just use the initial coordinate. So when x is equal to 1 y is also equal to 1. So a bit of coordinate geometry here. So 1 equals minus 3 lots of 1 plus c. 1 equals then minus 3 plus c. Therefore our c is going to be equal to 4. So our final answer here for our tangent here will be y equals minus 3x plus 4 to give us the marks on this question. Now, this is a fairly short video, but again, these are the three types of questions you need to be really familiar with to get those big five mark, seven mark questions you get often at the end of a paper four, occasionally also on a paper two as well. Now, two follow-up um, videos that you could watch here or two uh, follow-up activities you could do here. The first one is right in front of you where I go through all of IGCC differentiation, a much longer video for about 40, 45 minutes. So that video is there in front of you. And if you want to really get to grips on differentiation from the beginning, if you've got no experience of it whatsoever, I will pop my Udemy course in the description below so you can access that. And that goes through right from the start all the way through to answering exam paper questions.